Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use yes, no fields, right? True, false, yes, no, on, off, Boolean fields with checkboxes, toggle buttons, combo and list boxes, and also count up the number of checked items in your Microsoft Access databases. Today's question comes from Paige in Rockport, Texas, one of my gold members. Paige says, for each of my customers, we have six different products they might be interested in. I have these set up as six separate yes, no fields in my customer table with checkboxes on my customer form. Can these be drop-down boxes instead? Also, how can I get a count of how many customers are interested in each product? Well, a couple of things, Paige. First of all, I want to stress that setting up the different products that a customer is interested in as different checkboxes, yes, no fields in the customer table is not good relational database design. You should use a separate related table for that. And I'll go over that a little bit more in the extended cut. Since you're a gold member, you can watch that. But I do see a lot of people set up their databases just the way that you've got it right there. For example, if uh, like I used to sell computers, so I would have customers in different categories. This one's a hardware only customer. This one's a service customer. This one's a training customer and so on. And I see a lot of people build their databases that way. So with that assumption that you've got your database built that way and you really don't want to make major changes to it, I will show you how to change it in this video. However, watch the extended cut and I'll show you how to properly set it up with relationships. Also, a lot of people don't like using checkboxes. I'm one of them. Uh, so yes, I'll show you how you can use combo boxes. They're not called drop-down boxes in Access. They're called combo boxes. All right, drop-down is like web, base, web pages and Excel and stuff like that. You call them drop-down boxes. Uh, and yes, getting a count of how many customers, that's pretty easy. We can do that with a query. So let's see how this works. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database download off my website. You can go grab a copy if you want to. You'll find a link in the link section down below the video in the description. You got to go down and click on that thing and you can find a copy of this. Now, I've got a customer form and I've already got an is active checkbox in there, but let's add checkboxes in the customer table just the way Paige has them. Let's do the example that I mentioned earlier. Let's say I want to track my different customers and put them into categories. So this one is is hardware is this a hardware customer there'll be a yes no value is software yes no value right is training and oop training q nope training q doesn't do uh, q does do training doesn't he and is service let's say we'll do four of them okay and again i strongly recommend you make a separate category table to track this information but that's going to be in the extended cut this is not considered good normal database design because you have to make major changes to the design of the database to add another topic. What happens if later on you decide you want to do seminars, let's say, and you want to put an add an is seminar customer, right? And, and track that for all your, your clients. Well, now you got to change the table. You got to change all the related queries. You got to change the forms. You got to change the reports. Whereas if you just had to add a record to a category table, then yeah, that's simple to do. And you don't have to have design access to the database. Now, a few things about yes, no values, all right? There's a format down here. You can change this if you want to. They can either be yes, no, true, false, on, off. It's all the same thing. It doesn't matter. Access doesn't care, okay? Yes, no is the default. You can put a default value down here of no or yes, whichever you want it to be. Another reason why I like I try to avoid yes, no values is because they don't offer a null option. It's either yes or no. So what if you have data that you, you don't know the answer? Like, for example, let's do sex, right? Someone's sex, all right, male or female, or you might not know, okay? If it's a new client and you, you know, you, you get their information by email and it's a, the name's Chris, you don't know if it's male or female. So you, you have to pick one or the other, but you don't know the data. So I, I actually try to avoid yes, no fields for a lot of things if possible. I use a number value, right? You can do one, zero, or null. Now, here's something interesting. If you go over to the lookup tab down here, you can actually change the display control. The default is checkbox, but you could change it to a text box or a combo box. I don't like doing this at the table level. I like to leave these alone. If you want to display this with a combo box or a text box, do it in the form, but I like to leave the table alone at checkbox. Just trust me. You don't want these kinds of definitions in your tables. That's just my preference. Okay, so we're going to leave this as checkbox here. Okay, so save this, control S, close it down. Now, if we go to our customer form, okay, right click, design view. Let's open up the form design up here. 
add existing fields. Let's make some room for these. We'll put them. Let's just get rid of notes for now. We don't need that. All right. I'm going to click on is act. Oh, no, we already have is active. Click on is hardware. Shift click on is service and then click drag and drop them all there. So now I've got check boxes for these guys. Save that. Close it. Open it up. And there's your four check boxes. Okay. And yeah, you can change the labels if you want. All right. You can come in here and say, you can get rid of the is. I like to start all my yes, no values off with is. That just kind of tells me that it's a yes, no value. All right. And we can, of course, format paint and make these guys. Whoops. Let's double click and go click, click, click. All right. Let's take a peek here. See what we got. Okay. Looks good. Let me go to the next record. All right. Check, check. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can display these very easily. All right. Hardware, for example. Right click on it. Go to change to. There's toggle button and option button. Toggle buttons look like this. That doesn't look very good, right? We got to come over here. We could drag it like this. Okay. Take the word hardware, get rid of that label, and you can put the label right on it as a caption. Just click on it and go hardware, like this. All right. And then you can do the same thing with software. Delete the label, right click, change to, toggle button. I don't know why it comes in like that. That looks ugly. I also don't like these themes. This blue with the, the swirly, I don't know. It's just me. I'm old school. All right. So there's hardware, there's software, and you can arrange these as toggle buttons. I'm not a big fan of toggle buttons either, though. I'll be honest with you. Like, it's hard to tell which one's pushed on and which, which one's not. Right? Now, in the extended cut, I'm going to show you a trick as well. When you click on it, right, I, we can have it say, like, you know, uh, like we can do invoice and quotation, right? Change the caption there. You could say hardware yes or hardware no. Change the, 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 the font color. Okay? I like using the old school buttons, though. So if you open up the properties for this guy... Go to where it says use theme and change that to no. I like these old school looking buttons myself. Save that, close it, open it back up. These look like they're pushed down. Then you can tell more easily. Hardware, software. Okay. The other one, option group. All right, right click, change to. Right, option button requires an option group. That's where you can have you know, a few different options visible and you can pick from them. I usually don't use that with yes, no values. Usually I'll use that if there's like a, a, an option that's like three or more values, like you're picking a shipping type, FedEx, UPS, you know, US mail, that kind of thing. I'm going to do a separate tech help video on option buttons because a couple of people have asked me questions about that. If you want to learn about option groups right now, I cover them in Access Expert Level 4. Lots of stuff in here. Uh, these things, these are toggle buttons, right? This is an option group. we got list box. I'm going to show you a list box in a second. Okay. And yes, in the extended cut, I'll show you how to change this a little bit more to make it more in your face that this button's pushed down. All right, so that's all you can pretty much get to with the right click change too, but you can display these in a text box or a list box or a combo box as well. Let's delete these guys, get rid of these. All right, let's put this here as a text box. I'm just gonna copy one of the other ones. I'm gonna copy family size, copy paste. All right, slide it up here. All right, and then you can change the control source over here to is hardware, All right? Copy, paste that in the name as well. All right, change the label. Hardware. Okay. And now when you save it and close it and reopen it, you'll get a false in there. Okay. You could change the format too. The format right here, true, false, right? There's the same thing, same options, true, false, yes, no, on, off, right? Set it to yes, no. You can also get fancy with the format. Check this out. We can do something like this. We can go, watch this. We can go semicolon, uh, yes, and then in brackets, blue semicolon no and then in brackets red like that watch this all right see it's right there in the format save it close it see eh, isn't that cute isn't that cool you could change the format based on what's in there now you have to type in a valid value like that but now yes will change to blue see that no all right you can play the different formats i cover those different formattings in let me look it up Access Expert 28, it looks like. But usually, I don't like to leave that as something you could type values into. So let's change this. All right, right click. Let's change to. Let's change it to a list box. Okay. Now, the problem with the list box is save it, close it, open it up. You don't have any, any value items in there. Okay. 
So instead of doing it that way, we're going to delete this guy, and we're going to create our own list box. So here's a list box. Drop it right there. Okay. For this one, we're going to type in the values that I want. Next. All right. Now I want two columns. All right. The first column is going to be the the hidden column, the value. All right. The the actual value that gets stored in the in the table. Now, here's an interesting thing to know about yes no values. Okay. In the table, what's actually stored for a yes, it's negative one, and for no, it's zero. Why it's negative one is the topic for a whole different video. It has to do with bitwise operations. But you got to be careful because some other uh, database applications like SQL Server stores it in a bit value, which is just one or zero, not negative one. So if you're going between Access and SQL Server, you have to do a little conversion, which is, it, it drives me nuts sometimes. Okay, so let's go negative one and then yes or on or whatever value you want to put there and zero for no. And we can shrink that up so we don't have to see that value. All right, next. That's the bound value. And if you've never done list boxes before, go watch my combo boxes and list boxes videos. I'll put links down below in the link section. Next, we're going to store that value in the hardware field. Is hardware right there. Next, what label do you want? Hardware and finish. And there's our list box. It's going to be too big, but let's take a peek at it. Okay, not bad. Yes, no. See? If you want a bunch of list boxes, make it like that big. Save. All right. Easier to see. Let's see what those values in the table look like. Let's come back over here. All right. There's our yes, no values. Now, you can see the actual negative ones and zeros in here if you use a query. And a query is how we're going to add these guys up. But let's just make a quick query real quick. Let's go create query design. Let's bring in the customer table, customer ID, and let's bring in hardware, training, software, service, all these guys. All right, let's save this as my customer queue and take a look at it. All right, now they come in as checkboxes. But if you want to see the actual values that are stored in there, watch this. Come into, come into design view. All right, let's get rid of this. All right, let's pick one of these fields. Change the lookup to text box. Okay, and under general, change the format to zero. That forces a number in there. All right, do the same thing with software. We'll just do two of them. Lookup is going to be text box. General format is zero. Now you'll see the actual values in here. See? Okay, and you'll sometimes see this if you use these yes, no values in calculations and calculated query field. But you can see there's negative ones stored for yes and zeros stored for no. And if you change any of these to any other value, like four, it'll turn into negative one. It's either zero or not zero. And in fact, when you are checking for any values that are true, false, yes, no, they're also called Boolean values, by the way. In VBA, you'll hear them called Boolean, right? Dim X as a Boolean value. But a Boolean value should always check for either zero or not zero. You can check for true and false too, but I, I like zero and not zero. Um, so now, now that we know that these are negative one values, we can actually add up that whole column by just adding up the negative ones and multiplying it by negative one, right? But we'll get to that in a minute. Let's go back to the form. Okay, let's change this to a combo box. Right? I like combo boxes better than list boxes, unless it's like you're just picking one thing. But it's an easy change, right? Right click, change to combo box. The only difference between a combo box and a list box is that a combo box is always, or a combo box closes up, whereas a list box is always open. And with a combo box, you can have the option to type in new values, which we can't do here. In fact, make sure that's not allowed under data. And where is it? Add uh, limit to list is yes, and allow value list edits. Shut that to no. They can't make changes to it. And notice the, the name is list 36. I don't like that. I change that whenever possible. We'll just change that to is hardware combo. I like to put combo on the end of combo boxes. All right, save that guy. And there we go. There's our yes, no values. Yes and no. All right, now Paige wants to know how to also add these guys up. So in our customer query that we have here, okay, we've got um, a bunch of negative ones and zeros. If I switch this query over to an aggregate query, watch this, design view, turn it over to a totals query. All right, and instead of group by, we're going to make these all sum. We're going to add up these values. I have a whole separate value on a video on aggregate queries. Go watch that if you haven't watched it before. And you want to know what an aggregate query is. Now when I add them all together, 
you can see I got that, but we're going to get rid of the customer ID like that, and now it'll give us the total of each column. You got to multiply that by negative one, though. So you could come in here and say, is hardware times negative one, right? And then you'll get a positive two in there. Okay, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is if you have a continuous form like this guy. All right, let's take this continuous form. Actually, we can use the customer list form. We got this guy already set up. Let's come in here, design view. Let's get rid of all of these fields. We don't need them. And let's put our checkbox fields in here, our yes, no's. So add existing fields, these guys, drop them right there. All right, I'll chop off the labels and put them up top. All right, so we got hardware, software, training, service, just like that. Let's format these so we can see them. Okay, and we'll put the checkboxes below them. So there's hardware, software, training, service. Right there. Now, this is going to look like this. Okay, and you can go down here and check these off easily, right? Now, if you want a total on the bottom, we can use the sum function and sum those up. I covered this in my form footer totals video. I'll put a link to that down below as well. All right, we'll need a text box for this. I'll just drop that down here. And we'll slide it up underneath hardware. Okay. And this guy is going to be, for the control source, equals the sum of is hardware times negative one. And we'll change the name to sum hardware. All right, let's take a peek. Look at that. See? All right, and if you change it, see? it updates. You have to leave the record for it to update. See, if I just check that, it doesn't update. All right, as soon as I leave the record, the form for the totals will update. You could put a manual refresh in the after update event or the on click event for these boxes, but that's usually going beyond what most people want to do. So you just copy this, paste it. All right, a couple times. And you'll change what's in there. So this will be is this one here is uh, software. All right. Some software is training. Some training and is service. Some service. And I know you can't see this easily, so let me zoom in. There it is. All right, sum of is service, and I have no spaces in my field names, right? No space. It's not is service. It's not is underscore service. It's not is dash service. Don't use any characters in your field names, in your table names, in your query names, except letters and maybe numbers. But I, even I try to avoid that, right? Don't have group one, group two, group three, group four as field names. If it goes beyond three of something, it should be in a separate table. But don't use spaces in there. Access will automatically put these brackets around sometimes, but you don't need them. Okay, and it, trust me, you'll see, you'll, I, I go over this in Access Beginner 1, you will save yourself a lot of headache if you don't put spaces in your field names, and people always argue with me, and, I'm, and that turns out I'm right, especially once you get into programming and developer level stuff in SQL, those spaces, those underscores, those dashes, those question marks, I went to, an, and I, I, hate to I hate to rant, but I went to another, I, I want to say one of my competitors, but not really, it's, no one competes with me. I'm the best. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm, um, I went to a, another access training site, and they had a field in there that was uh, W2 as the field name for the customer, if they've collected a W2 or not. And it was W hyphen 2 question mark as the field name. And I'm like, no, you don't do that. I could tell whoever was teaching that didn't, hadn't spent a lot of time with real world databases. There's a lot, there's a lot of pain in that field name. All right. Um, so we're going to center all these guys, save it, close it, open it back up. Boom. There you go. There's all your totals. That's how you add up the totals of the checkbox. So I hope you learned something. I hope that, uh, this was of use to you. A lot of people set up their databases this way. Paige, don't feel bad. I see this all the time, especially with insurance salesmen. I've seen them do a lot of these, like, you know, is broker, is this, is that. You know, or they have separate products. And, and, you know, you might have, like, your business might be these four things, and it almost never changes. It might not change in 10 years. Okay? But when it does, 
Now look at all the, all the stuff you got to change. You got to change all the tables. You got to change all the queries. You got to change all the forms, all the reports. So in the extended cut, I will show you how to make these groups as, as a separate table and how to store that properly with a form and a subform relationship. And I'll go one step further. I will show you how to take this database page and fix it so that we'll take all this existing data and make the new records for it in the properly related table. So we'll fix it. So I've done something similar to this in a past video. I, I had this groups video where I did cover something like similar to this. So we'll take it one step further. I'll show you how to, how to unmess this database up and do it right without using these checkboxes. Okay, okay, so that, so that. If you want to learn more in the extended cut for the members, I'm going to show you how to change button properties. So these guys, right? It says no hardware, click on it, hardware. You change the font, make it blue, right? See how they work, right? That's pretty cool. And it'll work when you go from record to record too, like that, see? Then we will set up proper groups and convert the yes, no values over to the grouping system. The proper way to handle this kind of setup is relationships, right? So I can say, okay, hardware. That way, if you want to add new stuff like advertising or internet service, it's very easy to go to your group table and just add another group in here. And now that'll show up in your combo boxes instead of dealing with these yes, no buttons. Because now you got to modify tables and queries and all the forms and all the reports and everything. No, don't put yes, no values in your customer table like that. Then I'll show you how to use some query action to take the data that you already have wrong in your customer table and create those groups for the, you know, tens of thousands of customers you already have in the database. So you don't have to go through and do that all by hand. That is all covered in the extended cut for members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. We've got like 230 of them now. So there's a lot. I've been doing this for almost two years. Gold members can download these databases that I build in these tech help videos. There's lots of those too, all on my website. Um, and you get the code vault and you get extra courses and all kinds of extra perks. So if you're curious, click on that join button and to learn more, well, here it comes. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now. If you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1.
Yep, that's all. One dollar. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.